Welcome back, everyone. Uh, it's time to decide who will move on to one of the only two spots remaining in the round of eight. It's either going to be Ragnarok or Zest. Our Tosis predictions on fire today. Yeah, generally. Either in the good way or the bad way. Um, <laughs> yeah, so between these two, I definitely side with Ragnarok. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Zest is able to take him out. He has some games to look at from Ragnarok to be like, oh, okay, I kind of get some of the it's, ideas that you're going for. It's always a funny thing when we have group stages and there's three of one race and then one of another. Because that person, that, like in this case Ragnarok, it's just Zerg. All he had to do was prep ZVP and have a wide range of different ways to approach the matchup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whereas, you know, looking at Zest here, he never really goes to late game. You don't want to right now anyways, so I guess that's right. fine. Uh, but yeah, you look at this, that's a couple macro maps to open. So is he going to be able to hit some sharp timings that can hurt Ragnarok? We did see Classic win on King's Cove, so Let's see what Zest has got. Okay, our game has loaded up. Ragnarok for Zest. Again, the winner goes on to the round of eight of the GSL. We're almost there. Chivo, Ragnarok. A lot of Ragnarok fans in the audience tonight. Today, excuse me. We're going to end on 3999 tonight, aren't we? Are we? Yeah. Who's there in final match? Ocean oh Gaming. Zest. Tuesday. Where will you be when well, the be number hits 4,000? Exactly right here. Yeah, next holding to you. my hand. Yeah. On Tuesday. Single tear coming down my face. Big numbers amaze me, Artosis. Yeah. When they line up like that. Yeah. And the thing is, the we have 10 fingers zeros. on our hands, and that's why we, we count in base 10. So, I mean, mm -hmm. that's why this is an important number. Makes sense. Oh, good Zergling. Lingling can't stop. So, yeah, let's see uh, what, what Zess wants to do here. It's going to be some. Oh, it's, it's, it's his birthday? Is it? Oh, no, it was on the third. It's actually my new baby's those... birthday, the third. He stole my baby's birthday. Yeah, well, you can't have two people born on the same day. No, not in this close a relation. Yeah. There's only one degree of artosis separating them. Yeah. It's good to see those stuffed animals who are enjoying StarCraft. Yeah. Stuffed animals definitely like StarCraft. Definitely. They're the quietest when I put it on in the house. That's why when I'm, you know, not casting a tournament, I make sure to get all my stuffed animals out and we have tea parties while we watch the games. Yeah. Gives you something to cuddle. Mm -hmm. You can tell them your predictions that are generally wrong and they won't call you on it. <laughs> yeah. You want to try co-casting with them sometime. <laughs> well, sorry, you did co-cast with Jake, actually. He's <laughs> basically just a giant teddy bear. Yeah, he is. Now, um, we're still waiting. We don't know what exactly the Protoss is, is going gonna, is gonna to do. We know there's probably going to be some type of timing attack. The difficulty for the Zerg is you don't know which one. And each ty type of timing attack uh, requires a different way to handle it. Yeah, he's getting uh, Overlord speed. And there's Twilight on the way, so that's going to be good for him. Uh, we'll see if this is a, a DT-based Archon drop or if it's just straight up some, uh, some Twilight upgrade. Can't talk quite yet, but we'll... We shall see as it finishes. It'd be interesting if he goes into the Dark Archon drop, just because, again, we haven't really seen Archon drop since the patch. Here we go. Okay. Okay, Dark Shrine. It is scouted. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think that this is actually a pretty good build for the map, just generally speaking. Uh, it puts some pressure on your opponent. Uh, even if they see it coming, you know, it is still an Archon drop. It'll do a little bit. You have to be a little bit more careful now, obviously, with the pickup range reduced. Uh, but I, I feel like the best way, in my opinion at least, the, the way that I like to see uh, DT-based Archon drops play out is taking a third base, lots of Immortal production, and not getting into Psystorm. Just like a very strong uh, charge Archon Immortal army. With some sentries, obviously, thrown in there. But I feel like that's a very strong uh, way to play this type of strategy. I actually feel like this style of play I associate most with Zest of any other player in StarCraft 2. Okay. 
I mean, if I'm remembering correctly, I know it was several years ago, but I mean, he was the guy that really proved how robust this approach is. I believe you're correct. Um, back on the Overwatch, I think, is where we started to really yeah. see this build. And it got to the point where Zerks were, like, just straight countering with mass speed roach and trying to bust down third bases. But, yeah, that that was during the period where Zest was the best in the world. The thing is, he actually pioneers a lot of the Protoss builds, so people, like, make fun of me for saying how good he is and how I always think he's going to advance. The thing is, if you look at actually what he's done for Protoss and, and how much of what we do revolves around what he's done, it's uh, it's really impressive. Are you surprised he went with the DTs immediately here, since this was scouted? Uh, it was just one of these moves where it's like, well, obviously he's just going to go straight into Archons because the Dark Shrine was yeah. scouted, and so he's trying to like do that mind game of like, you never would think this is coming because it's so counterintuitive. Yeah, I think it is a little bit of that. And I mean, look, he got a little bit of damage done, right? He got a couple drones. He, he didn't do a whole hell of a lot, but you may as well. The You know, as the queen count grows, you're not going to get a lot done with the Archons anyways. Kind of put the fear of God into him, right? He's not mining from over here. <laughs> Something funny about stuff like that. I don't know. Yeah. So uh, he's going to try to bring the Archons over here. Now, uh, the goal is to not lose any Queens or Drones. Really good control here by Zeth. Yeah. Oh, until the last second. Okay, Fantastic. he does get a pickup, kills the Queen. I like it. I really like that. All right. Got to move over and see what he can get done in the main. War Prism still with plenty of HP. Interesting Whoa. that Ragnarok is not targeting the Prism much. Uh, yeah. he, he hit the the Archon several times with the Queen. Uh, that feels completely useless. <gasps> oh my Those god! Those stacked drones, if he had targeted that, that could have been so scary. Would have popped everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is, I mean, it's getting all right damage done. Dive on that Queen. Great micro from Zest here. Look at that. Two queens killed, five drones killed. I get, get nervous every time I see Ragnarok with these drones bunched up and the Archons are so close by. I know, right? Spire incoming, yes! Yeah, this is cool. And this seems to be like uh, happening as the War Prism uh, harass is being toned mm -hmm. down a little bit here. Because Zess doesn't have that much more energy on those Archons. Yeah. Is he going to uh, get one more DT? Huh, okay. Yeah, he actually had another DT out. I don't know what oh, happened did he? to it. I didn't see that. So I believe he likely has two DTs on the map right now, unless he lost one during the Archon harassment. Okay, just keeping a little bit of pressure on. This is very cute. Unfortunately, not quite doing as much as I think he had hoped for. He's going to actually recall that DT back. Oh, my God. Yeah, very worthwhile. Is he going to get another queen? Yeah, he is. Are we serious about this? I don't feel like Ragnarok's defense, execution-wise, is where it should be. It feels, yeah, I definitely somewhat agree, and I want to give a shout out to uh, Zest's harassment <laughs> because now, you know, when he dropped the initial DTs out, he was focusing queens a little bit and putting some damage on them, and then he just aggressively juggled his archons towards queens the whole time. So, if pickup range is an issue because queens will shoot you down. Instead, of drones focus on queens a bit more, and it feels like that's what I'm seeing from Zest. Okay, he sees the mutas now. This is Danger City. <laughs> See this? Serious Danger City. Look at this. The Roach oh is coming, God. too. This is like chasing a medevac with Ling Muta, man. Look at this. Oh, All right, no. so he's going to finally be able to take out both those Archons. It's actually pretty important you keep the Archons alive and the Warpism alive. Yeah. What's his anti-air right now? It's three centuries and a Stalker. Ragnarok with excellent muta timing here. Yeah, yeah, doing very well with that. Obviously, when you go for a DT-based Archon drop, it's like you don't have anything that's anti-muta. Like, the Archons are really it, so catching that prism is a gigantic, a gigantic thing because, uh, for instance, most walls that you have as Protoss, you can't walk Archons through, so you have Archons on one side or the other. And to defend against mutas properly, like, if you have Archons in a prism, you can actually kind of chase mutas with it. You yeah. know, you can kind of, it, it's a reasonable defense. Okay, this forces out a lot of stalkers, which allows a Zerg to very comfortably make a lot of Zerglings here. Again, a lot of times as you see these mm -hmm. games progress, it's them both trying to force mm -hmm. certain techs out that they can try to counter that later on. And it, with the two Stargate Phoenix coming up and the kind of late splash damage, I love the Baneling speed. We talked about that previously as well. Um, you know, it just 
getting into this kind of massive army when your opponent is spending money on phoenixes is always going to be nice. It's not the, the blink stalkers that we were talking about exactly, but just the, the massing of these lower tier units feels very nice. And, and, and this is all uh, designed to ramp up to a maxed out Zerg that uh, if and when the Protoss does come out, uh, the Zerg is ready to have a smashing attack. Mm -hmm. Ling yeah. Roach, Bane Ravager, like a, a max out army of that? Phoenixes don't really do much of anything. Yeah, they don't play much of a role. Yeah, so like the idea is just as there's enough Phoenixes, which we're seeing now, to uh, to counter nice control here by uh, Zess. Mm -hmm. Just when there's enough Phoenixes out to basically counter the Mutas, that's when uh, the rest of the supply is going to be filled up with this big ground army, and it basically makes the Phoenixes fairly useless. Yeah, the best you can probably do here is lift up Ravagers, maybe Queens. Uh, I think picking up Banelings might be a waste of your time. Uh, but yeah, if, if the Banelings mostly are hitting Archons, you can definitely see Zest taking down this battle. It's just, if this army all connects correctly, the Zerg army, it is pretty scary still. Okay, here we go. Uh, Ragnarok oh. coming around here. Really good force fields blocking Ridiculous. out a lot of these Banelings. Oh, but more Banelings roll in. Yeah, Zealots being absolutely such decimated. Such a ridiculous number of Zerg units here. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I mean, when you have force fields that were that good and he runs over you with this much? Mm -hmm. Jeez. No, the force <laughs> fields were really, really good, so that's impressive. I love that he's actually forcing these back. This means a DT-based uh, defense might actually keep Zest alive. There's, like, no detection over here. See that? What do you do? You got one Baneling there. Yeah, this is a lot, of, a lot of DT action in this game. Artosis. That is so funny. He's just he's killing off all the Overseers. This is like DT Corsair. Seriously. Yeah, actually. Where's the detection? He's got to build spores at this point defensively. That's so funny. Crushing I, that thought, army. I thought the game was about to end. I, I still think we're not far from that. Yeah. But, <laughs> but um, yeah. Cool to see, right? I love it. Oh, my God. He has a DT in every single base. Please like, tell me Zest will win this game in the greatest comeback of all time. It, it's insane if he wins this, but it's completely based off DTs and, and Phoenixes. Well, you know, once you get that detection. I guess he could send the Phoenixes back here. Oh Dude, my God! What is happening to Ragnarok? Every drone in the whole universe. Why are we getting like the esports fan fiction game? Like this is not how StarCraft games normally look at the highest level. No, no. And then two DTs killed all of his workers. <laughs> what? <laughs> like what league is this again? Oh, yeah. it's GSL Codes. Yeah. They're fighting it's for Zest a round eight spot right now. Yeah. <laughs> look at this. And there were no overlords left. He was maxed out, and then he lost everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that happened. Uh, we're back down to uh, some lower worker supplies at this point. You know what's going on in Ragnarok's head right now? He's so salty. He's like this race. So when you're just... playing, and you're just like, I am so bad. I am. This is. I. This is so bad. Like I can't believe this is me. This is my yeah. mind and body in, in this moment right now. I. Yeah. Everyone goes through that for yeah. sure. All right. Three broodlords on the way. <laughs> Not an infester in sight though. Obviously the broodlords are helpful here. Mm, three archons can't really break through that. Right. I think he holds. Uh, well, hold on. Yeah. Well, nice. now you have the break. Well, all in the Phoenixes are going after these Broodlords. Mm. He's got a lot of Zealots and Archons. If he can get the Archons underneath the uh, Broodlords, then yeah, he can actually get this. Look at this. Yeah, he's not doing too bad, actually. He gets all he's the He's got broods. a War Prism. He's yeah. going to be able to warp it again. He's going to get the Corruptors. Now the Phoenixes are going to be left over. Look at this. Yeah. Ooh. Well, these Phoenixes did uh, quite a bang-up job right there. Uh, Three more Broodlords, though. Oh, I actually almost didn't see that. Yeah, they're by the Overlords. Yeah, now trying to target down specifically the uh, Archons. Gets that last Corruptor. Well, this game turned out to be much closer than uh, yeah, yeah. it was really supposed to be. Well, Ragnarok started wrecking. And uh, it, it, now imagine if Zest hadn't thrown away that army. The thing yeah. is, it felt like, even I thought, like, oh, maybe this can do something, right? It, it kind of came down to a Baneling connection, but there were actually so many Banelings. This is... Ragnarok, more like throw Grok, right? <laughs> throw Grok! <laughs> Am I right, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, I Grok that. Uh. <laughs> throw Grok. <laughs> 
So uh, we're seeing this game really uh, quiet down. So the amount that DTs have done this game is so crazy. Yeah. This feels like StarCraft 1. Yeah. It definitely actually does look a lot more like a StarCraft 1 PvZ. I think the blink is fantastic since they've just been bludgeoning each other. You can get some real efficiency with those things like blink stalkers in a game like this where it's not just a huge maxed out scary army. Zest sitting here on 36 army supply. My god. It's well, it's so a, we need to see oh. if Ragnarok can close this one out. Oh no. Okay. Don't worry, it was a hallucination. <laughs> Okay, he's coming now. Uh, but there's two more Archon making. There's actually two Immortals down there as well. Uh, yeah, I can't imagine him I just, yeah, on. I just don't, I don't see there's how no he does way. it. No way. That army. I don't care if each of these is a hero unit. If he were to, he needs MOBO to win this battle. That's right. He doesn't have MOBO there We at need all. the hero Baneling unit. <laughs> How do you become a hero baby? It's like it's like a hero unit in the single player, and then when it dies, like if it dies, you lose the game. You're like, what? <laughs> so I literally yeah, have like move a unit. Command uh, so much. I have this unit that's a ball that I have to like roll around the map and like not. Yeah. It's like a baby that has spells. It has psionic storm. Like <laughs> I think you should go make the campaigns for I StarCraft know. Three, man. Yeah. GG. Ragnarok uh, does win game one, but and he's he's got a sense of humor about it. I mean, two DTs killed off like something like forty drones, but yeah, yeah. he pulled it together and ended up winning anyways. Well, Zest, Zest was trying to hit this very strong attack, right? Um, and the force fields were actually really really good, but the just the ridiculous concave, right? That was like a two hundred seventy degree engagement by Ragnarok. So the yeah. force fields.